Alright guys, in today's video we're taking a look at a build for the Express LRS 2.4 gig module. Now this particular one is the Slim module. There is a JR full size module available, but we're looking at the Slim today. This one suits radios such as the TBS Tango 2 if you've got the external module bay adapter. It fits on there quite nice and snug. It'll also suit handsets such as the FreeSky X Lite and if you print a different STL it'll also suit the FreeSky X9 Lite handset. So this one's using the E28 RF module inside which is good for a max of 500 milliwatts power output. Uh, at the moment the code's constrained to 250 milliwatts output but if you want to get in there and change the code you can push it up to 500. It's just set to 250 to be on the safe side at the moment. In terms of packet rate with a standard OpenTX build, you can push 250 Hz packet rate out of this one. And if you use the OpenTX pre-built binaries on the Express LRS repo and flash that to your handset, this will do 500 Hz out of the box. Um, so fairly decent packet rate. Now, in today's video, we're just going to step through the build order. All the steps are already up in the PCB folder in the repo, uh, but we're just going to run through it step by step and have a look at how to put each of the components onto the board uh, and how to build the whole thing end to end. And that should get you up and flying with Express LRS 2.4 gig. So let's jump into it and have a look. So the first thing you're going to want to do is order the PCBs and the parts required. So go to the GitHub page for Express LRS for this PCB and download the Gerber file. There's instructions on there on what settings to use when you submit your order to the PCB manufacturer. We prefer JLC PCB for most of our builds, uh, but people have had success with other PCB houses, so uh, take your pick really. And the other thing that you're going to want to do uh, after you order PCBs is order the parts list. Uh, so the best place to get most of these parts from is AliExpress and it's going to take a little while for those parts to arrive depending on where you are. So submit the PCB order as well as the parts order at around the same time and then hopefully you should have everything ready to go uh, within a couple of weeks. Okay, so following along with the build order that's on the PCB page on the repo, the first step is to position your E28 on the footprint on the PCB here. And then just take your soldering iron and tack down one of these pads and make sure you're all aligned on both sides here. And then just run along and do each one of these pads with the iron soldering the E28 down to the PCB. So E28 is now all done. Uh, the next thing on the build order is to move this little resistor here. This is a tiny SMD zero ohm resistor which is sending the RF output of the E28 into this trace antenna here. And that's not going to give us very much gain. So what we want to do is swap that over. There's an extra pad here and we just move it over one pad so that it bridges the RF output into the UFL here. And then we want to use the tail to connect that to our actual antenna. So we'll move that over. Uh, I'd probably use a bit of flux on there. It's going to make it a bit easier getting it off and getting it down back onto those other pads. So we'll add some flux and then move it over. All right, so the resistor's been moved over and you probably just want to check that the center pin uh, of the UFL has continuity with uh, this left-hand side of the resistor just to make sure that this bridge has actually been soldered down correctly, um, just to make sure that your antenna is actually going to be connected when you fire it up. Okay, so basically the same deal with the ESP32 as it was with the E28. Basically what you want to do is just tack down one pad, get it aligned, and then go around and do the rest. Okay, so just go around and make sure all those fillets are connected down properly. It's all looking pretty good here. Just make sure there's no bridges or anything like that as well. Okay, so the next step is to solder on our two 10K resistors. So we've got one just here and one up over here for the regulator. So take them out of the packaging, try not to lose them. So basically it's the same again. We just want to tack one side down and get it nice and aligned and then do the other side. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We've just got to add the capacitor now and then the regulator on the other side. So let's put the capacitor on. Mm 
Okay, so the capacitor's mounted up, making sure you've got the correct orientation with the stripe pointing towards the positive pad there. All right, now let's add the regulator. And these adjustable voltage regulators come with a number of preset voltage settings with these pads that you can bridge down here, but they come preset with the adjust uh, pads uh, bridged via this trace here. So you want to take a razor blade and just cut this trace up the top here and then solder a bridge across the 3V3 pad here to set it to 3.3 volts. So the regulator goes underneath the PCB to make sure there's enough clearance for the antenna. Uh, so basically it sits underneath on the underside like this and you want to use a 4-pin header and just remove the plastic strip in between the 4-pin header so that it sits as flush as possible. But before you add the regulator onto the board, just to make sure there's definitely no chance on shorting out anything underneath, it's a good idea just to add a little piece of electrical tape underneath to the underside here and then that way it's definitely not going to short on anything. Okay, so the pin head has been soldered to the regulator, so next we just want to remove this plastic piece on the bottom here. Okay, so the next step is to mount the regulator to the PCB. And it just slots into these pin holes like that. And then we just solder it down on the other side and cut the pins off flush. Okay, so that's the hardware done other than adding the RPSMA pigtail to the UFL here. The next step is to connect up these pads here on the left hand side to your FTDI serial flasher and flash the first firmware onto the chip. And then after that you can use Wi-Fi flashing to flash your subsequent firmware updates. Okay, so we've got our FTDI connected up. I've got ground 3.3. TX to RX and RX to TX and then this boot pin here you just want to be able to toggle that with another ground so I've just got another uh, patch wire here and I'm just going to hold that onto the ground pin while we power up the ESP32 and then after that it'll be in boot mode and we can just leave that floating wherever and then we should be able to program it uh, using platform IO. Okay so I've gone ahead and printed out the STL for the top and the bottom of the case uh, so it's fairly simple print, shouldn't need supports or anything like that. So the next thing to do is to grab the little header, and this one has the round holes in it rather than the square holes. Um, so they're a little bit harder to find, but there is a link on the PCB page on the repo. So you just want to grab your header and solder on your ground, your VBAT and the S port pins and then insert that into the little slot here on the bottom of the print, all the way in. Okay, so I've got that fitting in there fairly snug now. Wires are coming through the back there. That's what you're gonna to solder to your three pads on the PCB. So you just wanna take some glue and glue this header down into this enclosure so it sits in there nice and tight and it's not gonna come out. And then we'll solder on those wires to the pads Okay, that glue's good enough. So what we're gonna do is we have these three pads just here on the PCB, which if we turn it around the right way, have G, V, and S on them. G is ground, V is VBAT, and S is S port. So you wanna take the three wires, you just route it into the back here. Um, obviously positive to V, um, negative to G, and then the white one there, which is S port to the S pin there. So we'll solder those up and then insert the PCB into the enclosure. Okay, so those three wires have been soldered on. Now we can insert PCB into the enclosure. So this regulator slots into this uh, recess here underneath. So that's the room for the regulator to fit in there. Okay, so that fits in there pretty nice and snug. So the next step is to take your RP SMA UFL tail and attach it to the E28 here. Now this one's a fairly long tail, so I'm just gonna wrap this around a bit so that it all fits nicely inside the enclosure before I screw the lid on. Okay, so that's coiled up nicely. Now we just insert the antenna into the antenna holder and apply our little locking washer and the final nut. 
Okay, so that antenna secured down nicely. The final step is just to take your top cover and secure it to the bottom using these four screw holes in the top. Just use a screw that's thin enough to go through the PCB and into the plastic underneath and just use a self-tapping screw to secure those down like that. And that's it, the job's done. It should come up looking something like this. Uh, so uh, plug that into your handset and just make sure that you're getting lure values coming through for your power and packet rate and that you're getting your numbers up in the top right hand corner and that'll just confirm that everything's good and it's working as expected and then go out and fly and enjoy your 500 hertz packet rate thanks for watching guys see you later